This meeting is being recorded. Yes, I can see the Facebook uh, live stream. Perfect. All right, welcome everybody to our VBOUT monthly partner meeting. I have with us today, George, who's gonna help me moderate the questions. So any questions you might have, please ask directly. We are here to answer them. I also wanna welcome Blaine, James, Jerwin, Joe, Larry A, Lord Zoom, Luis, uh, Miko, and also Scott. Thank you guys for joining us. The reach of this call is much more than this. This partner meeting usually is transcribed, recorded, and all the content will be shared after the call. So a lot of people watch them. There are perks for being uh, for attending, which you'll find out in a minute, and and devoting some time for this call. So a lot of people what we do. Them. George, do you mind muting, please? Here we go. So to walk you through the presentation and what we cover in our partner meeting, we run them monthly. We bring forth all the new releases in VBOT, some of which are closed beta releases, some of which are already out on your account. And we want to kind of show you how they work and benefits and give you first access to it as well when applicable, all right? I will also give you some content that could be relevant to you. We repeat some every month, but also we have some new content that you can look at. Uh, so I'll get started. And while I'm doing my a product kind of review, what we've released, what we've launched, please drop in your questions so I can answer. Um, I want this to be like an open uh, back and forth. <clears throat> All right. So first, let's talk about product updates. I love product updates. I live on the product. Um, the first release that we launched in February uh, was the reply trigger, okay? And part of it is already out, part of it is uh, coming. So to show you how this works, it is inside the automation of VOUT. And the concept of it is when you send out an SMS message or you send out an email to somebody and they reply, we can detect that reply, regardless of what their reply is, right? That's been long in the pipeline. A lot of people have requested because they're sending out sequences and they want to stop the sequence the moment someone replies to their email. So this feature is going to be um, out soon. The SMS reply is already out. So if you send something through VBout and they're already, um, you have a sequence that's say of 15 SMS and so when someone replies, you want to pause it, you can do this right now on all the accounts is publicly open uh, using this replied SMS trigger, okay? So that's the first feature. It's also gonna be rolled out in email soon. And for those of you who are wondering, when can we start connecting with Gmail? We are working on it. Unfortunately, Gmail has some restricted scope requirements that are quite steep uh, in fees and, and, and things like this. I don't know why, but they do it like that. So with that being said, uh, reply SMS is out. Reply to email trigger is also going to be out soon. Um, working on pretty much all email clients except for Gmail because we cannot connect to Gmail yet. All right. So that's the first feature. Any questions from anybody on this? <clears throat> no questions. All right. So for anything not pertaining to the feature, I'm going to leave to to uh, after I finish the feature sets. I know Lord Zoom is asking about something different, so I'll I'll get back to you, Lord Zoom, with that's okay. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> the provider of the SMS is uh, Twilio, so we fully integrate with Twilio. Many of you don't know, but we can do two-way SMS in VBA. We can send an SMS through VBA. We can actually receive SMS back if someone replies. You can also do an outbound calling through VBOUT Twilio. We can record the, uh, the calls also on VBOUT so that it can act like a dialer per se. Um, so we have the deep integration with Twilio for sure. All right. <clears throat> now the second feature that we launched is, uh, let me just move my, I don't know. The second feature is intent detection, all right? And this is really one of our expansion this year to integrate AI, machine learning, 
and everybody's talking about chat GPT and open AI and a few other AI components. Viva is going to have them across the board. And we already have invested two years ago in making machine learning part of our product. So when we talk about intent, I want to come back to this concept of sending out an SMS message and someone replying. So it complements that. What that means, if I send out an SMS message, I send out an email and someone replies to the, any of those two, we can now detect the intent on the fly, okay? And you don't have to be very specific um, in terms of like a drop down. You can say, and right now it's available under, it's not out yet. This is gonna be launched in the next week or so. Under SMS engagement, if we can detect the intent of the reply on a specific SMS to be a confirmation, it could be um, not interest, interested, You type in the intent that you want, and if the system can match it from that person's reply, you can actually make a decision tree accordingly, okay? So the intent reply is pretty um, smart. We're actually using OpenAI to identify the intent. Um, and you can use it, again, to build that decision tree. So as an example, you can send an SMS message inviting somebody to speak to a sales exec or... Um, an account exec, and based on the answer, it could be dozens of things. It could be, yes, I'm interested, straightforward. No, I'm not interested, also straightforward. It could be maybe, which is neutral. Um, it could be, I have some follow-on questions, so it could be more interest, right? So uh, you can, there are dozens of different replies that could take place. So you can actually code this and stack the different roles to say, all right, if the intent is neutral, or if interested, or if whatever, right? This is kind of stacking conditions in VBout. I can go ahead and send them this follow-up SMS message versus if it's a complete non-interest or something else, okay? So reply detection intent, reply intent detection will be launched. It's gonna be available in SMS and in email, starting with the SMS first. I'll take a quick pause on this. Uh, I want to see if anybody has questions. <clears throat> on this reply intent feature. No questions for the reply. Actually, um, we have Muhammad Kais but was asking how to use it. So I think you, you've already showed them, showed us how to use it. Yep, it's gonna be on the filter. So you can double click here and you can say, all right, the intent, first choose the, the type of the filter, which is going to be, you can type in intent. This might, it's not open yet, guys. So if you try it now, you might not find it. And here you can say if the intent reply is or is not, you type your own condition and you can stack multiple as well. Okay. Perfect. All right. Third feature, which is a huge feature, in my opinion, is also enhanced email validation. Many of you have brought an email list. They're importing it. It's quite stale. They purchased it. Or maybe they even have forms and a lot of people are filling out some bogus emails. Um, we introduce enhanced validation by integrating with a partner. And the way this works is going to have multiple um, outlets for it. All we do is we verify the validity of the emails so you can treat them. If an email is a bad email, a typo, a potential risk um, spam trap, or it could be um, just a general type email. And the way you can validate emails, by the way, this is similar to like never bounce, zero bounce and some of these other services, is you can go to all contacts. That's one area where you can use it. And go inside the contact records, and you see on right here on the drop down email validation, right? Now it asks you, what would you like to do if the returned email from that enhanced validation is valid, neutral, risky, undeliverable, or typo? So you can tell the system to suppress the record if the response back matches any of these. Okay, so if I do risky, undeliverable, and typo, and now I click validate, okay? Um, I need to wait a minute or so. I forgot how long this validation takes, but it's going to return back a respond and it's going to treat the contact based on that response. Okay. 
I can also do it on this view on the right side. So if I go to my contacts, I can do it one by one. I'm still doing it manually one by one in this case. I can also do it on the email list as a batch. So if I have an email list of let's say 50 or 100 or 1,000, what I can do is I can go to the right side and I can do batch validation. Okay, this list doesn't have any, just give me one moment. Um, let's say this one. So this one has 186 contacts. This is a credit-based add-on. So 297, and I can say, go through everybody on this list. If you find their status, any of these, you can go ahead and suppress them, all right? And we have a documentation on what each one of these means. So if you want to use that, I'll, uh, George, can you find that help doc and just share it with uh, on the chat, please? Sure. <clears throat> awesome. You can also do it upon importing a list. So I can go in here and say uh, mass import. And as I'm importing, I can activate enhanced validation, also suppress if the return result was any of these, and this will be fully uh, suppressed as well. So th this is also uh, done on, on a batch uh, process. <laughs> um, you see right here, it says pending validation. We noticed a couple of delays on the provider side. So please bear with us as we try to iron this out. Hopefully the provider um, is as good as they seem. <laughs> But if it's pending validation for a little bit of time, try to reach out to us and see if we can uh, look at the logs. We've, we've seen a little bit of delays in the response in some emails that could not be identified, okay? <clears throat> and then I also have it in what I think is the most important place for validation. It's going to be on the form itself. So when you're embedding VBOT forms on your site, you can have an option on the email. So if I expand the email field, which is usually a default field, you can take this option on, suppress if the product return, same thing at this point. So when people are filling out the form, we can immediately treat those emails um, so we can avoid future send and bounces and keep your reputation clean, okay? So you can activate enhanced validation also on your email addresses when you're embedding VBOT forms uh, on your sites, landing pages, and so on. All right, very powerful feature, guys. This is one of our intent to make your contact list cleaner. We want you to have better reputation. We always preach quality over quantity, especially in the email game. Okay, quantity doesn't matter anymore. In fact, quant quantity at large can yield bad results unless you have the most highly engaged email list. So with that being said, email validation is available. We have different add-ons for this. Um, it is a purchase add-on because we have to pay our integration partners as we grow. You can find, um, I think it is somewhere here. So you can do 5,000 emails validation. Um, you can even do just a basic 1,000 to activate it on your forms for 995. You can install it one time, use it if you have like a large list and then uh, uninstall it. Um, because you are with us on the call today and I do always encourage everybody to join us and I, because I appreciate your time, please leave your email to George and he can activate the enhanced email validation, 1,000 email credits at no cost to you for life. So you can have this feature activated on your forms and make your forms smarter. Or you can simply use it on your uh, smaller list. So please drop in your email in the chat, whether you are here or in Facebook, but you have to be right now. So by the time this event ends, please don't, don't leave your email, it won't count. Um, as a token of appreciation for devoting this time to attend live, okay? Uh, George will ensure to install this add-on for you on the back end. This way you have it. <clears throat> All right. Um, cool. Let's see if I have any questions. It seems like in the chat we have some questions here. Yeah. We have a question from uh, Jerome. Let's see. He's asking about the validation of the international 
I'm just scrolling back because the guys are dropping me their emails. I got it. So, I, I, I can read it, Church. Any idea how well this works on international email addresses other than US addresses? It's a growing database. The vendor said they have, um, I forgot the number, over 200 million emails. Um, again, it's a growing number. It might need to turn neutral. You know, if uh, you can try it on the thousand sa uh, sample that George will install in your account, Jaron. And if you feel like it's yielding good results, then you need to do it on a bigger batch that we can we can talk, okay? Um, it's not the cheapest of features because again, we have to um, pay the vendor and make some money for building it and maintaining it. Um, but it replaces the need to do never bounce and zero bounce. And usually it's a cost that's pushed over on, if you're an agency, your end client should be paying for this, right? To validate their email list. Um, and if it's your own list, it's definitely worth it uh, on a small scale, okay? <clears throat> uh, so David is asking, is this free or paid? It is paid, David, but because you're with us on the call, you're gonna get that feature um, added to your account. The thousand emails credit at no cost to you, okay? Just drop in your email here, David, for George, and George will take notes and we'll uh, let the team know to install it. <clears throat> Awesome. So uh, uh, Lord Zoom is asking, I like the whole concept of cleaning up emails on forms that prompts so many ideas. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Lord Zoom. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I don't see any questions. Yep. Yes, there's a thousand credits. So I think we're good, George, on this. I can move on to the next feature. Um, the documentation link is in the chat for everybody. Can you use it for changing flow? Um, I mean, the flow itself is usually based on an active contact. So if I already have flow and somebody is unsubscribed or not active, the flow usually won't execute on them. Okay, there's a little bit of tinkering around there, um, but if the person is suppressed and they're, they're inactive, then they usually won't go through the automation and they should not be getting any emails, all right? Um, yeah, <clears throat> cool. All right, feature number four is calendar custom terms of services links. And many of you have requested this because our integrated VBAL Calendly like component um, is right here. So in VBAL, I probably, you probably know this, but you can create a calendar and connect it to your own kind of active GCAL or any and people can book you directly. So we can identify your availability, we can book you. So it replaces 80% um, of Canly's functionality, not 100%, but it does replace it. Now, this particular flow has this terms of privacy policy link. If you wanted to uh, link to your website, all you gotta do, just go to your calendar, click or click on settings and you can parse your own privacy policy page URL, all right? Again, this is uh, just for those who are, or want to be GDPR compliant, just parse the proper URL and that should take care of it. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is freshly released. It's an integration with Nihilus and it's available to you right here. Now the beauty by using us versus Calendly is fully integrates with VBout, so contacts that book go directly in here and you can kind of see them come in, add them to automations and stuff like that. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Lord Zoom. And I have a couple more features. Public short codes. This one is not launched yet, guys. Probably March. Okay. But you can, you, everybody's familiar with short codes, right? Like dropping the variable in the email or the merge tag to refer to someone's name. But we realize sometimes people have dozens and sometimes hundreds of landing pages and they have titles that they want to change. So instead of changing those titles on 100 different pages, now you can create a global short code. You can give it a title. So you can say this is landing page headline. That's it. You can give it a name. Um, so we can just call it VBT um, codes. Doesn't matter. And then you can write the content. 
So I can say this is the best available product on the market. So the copy here is really up to you and you can have multiple. So now what you can do is you can take the short code and you'll be able to add it as snippets to all your landing pages. So in case in the future, you wanna make simple edits to those variables, you can come here and apply those edits on the short codes. They should also apply in your emails. So if your emails are dynamically changing and you have some variables in the email that change by season, be it a coupon code, uh, be it an offer, be it a title, you can create those global short codes here and apply them to your email or to your uh, landing pages. Okay, so this is also a feature that was in request. Uh, it's a really nice feature to have if you have a lot of assets in the system and it helps you avoid batch edits if you're doing small uh, content um, change. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's uh, let's see the questions here. Uh, Lord Zoom is asking, can you use API to change the short codes eventually? Which is one of the flexibility of this feature will be to be able to kind of sync it to your own product and then push things over to VBout and make it dynamic. So yes, that's that's highly likely what to, to happen. <clears throat> Jaron said, nice one. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jaron. Uh, Somebody suggested it. There are a few others uh, upvoted it. So it's, uh, it's a good feature. Yes. Any other questions Question. on this? You or, uh, because I had a question from Sergio on Facebook. He yeah, go for asking. it. Uh, thank you. So Sergio is asking about the email validation. So is there a way to validate? Mm -hmm. Uh, the email when they submit the form and then reject it and request another one? Um, I don't think it's going to be live like that. No, unfortunately. You can do it on the form uh, here. Try to show you, sorry, just to go back to it. So I go into the email, um, Enhance validation because it takes a little bit of time for the response. This is probably why it's not real live. Um, and you can treat it, but the person will actually have it will go through the confirmation. Okay. But in the background, you treat it. Most people are going to give you good emails, the valid contacts. But if somebody's just trying to mess, uh, mess up and provide some random emails, um, that will be very optical, but it's not real time. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and the final feature that we, this one was already released. You can see it on content filters on email builder, primarily on your automation emails. Um, these are conditional content. You probably have seen it in some places, but let's say you compose an email. This is a very simple one. Um, maybe it includes, I don't know, three different components. But you'll notice here when you hover over the elements, there is an option for filter. It's a conditional filter. So this particular block, let's say I'm sending to a thousand people and I have a thousand people in my database, different, uh, different tags are applied to different contacts, right? I can have my client space there. I can have people who are interested in product A and people interested in product B. So what I can do, I can create maybe three different versions of this countdown. Uh, I can have A match a specific audience who have, a specific tag, okay? And I can have this second element on the page be shown only to uh, different kind of clients, non loyal clients or whatever. All right, so every um, element within the email will be um, dynamic. So upon sending it, obviously the system will identify who matches that rule, will hide those that don't match or the content that doesn't match and the rest will be sent out. Okay, um, so this particular feature is quite interesting. It works primarily on tags to be specific as well, guys. Tag, and most people use tagging anyways, but I can say, all right, so I have these preset, what we call um, rule groups. It's a group of rules, that's all it is. Uh, now what I can do is manage rule groups if I wanna create new one. And again, this is really new guys, so please bear with me. So this is broadcast, I think. Uh, I have a bug on my, right? All right, I gotta come back to this, guys. 
but um, it's probably not, actually this is not out yet, but if it is, please bear with us, fresh out of the oven, but you'll be able to create your own um, loyal customer groups or any other groups based on tags and accordingly filter things out. This is fully, by the way, compatible with the legacy builder. It's out, it's functional for a month already, um, but we this is the new builder, drag and drop visual builder. So we're applying it here as well, okay? <clears throat> um, <laughs> that's true. Um, again, expect bugs on these guys because these are literally either things are in the final stages of releases, will be out in the next week or so, uh, or things that are just released and could encounter a bug. So you understand how that cycle works, I guess. <clears throat> All right, so Ayanis is saying, how can we change uh, the editor to this one? So Ayanis, you, you actually have an option now, and I'm gonna show you. Um, I already, I think, went inside the builder. When you create an automation template and you get to the stage, you're gonna notice we have themes that you can use, all right? Um, you also have inspirations and you notice on the inspirations, you have new builder, new builder, new builder. These are themes that came with the new builder. So anything that's themes are legacy builder. Anything that's inspiration is no builder. And I know this could be confusing. You're probably gonna merge them. It's just the way that we have things segmented at the moment. My templates, your templates, automated messages, um, just taps into your automated stuff, straightforward here. And when you go to new design, now you have two different options. One is to create, create a classic or use the classic. And one is to use the template designer, okay? Awesome, awesome. So George, I think I have some, uh, Jaren, thank you, saying that we're making a great job on making a good product even better. Um, Jaren, thank uh, Again, innovation is the key for any success for startups. We, we are here to stay and we understand the future of marketing. A lot of AI components and things that will make your marketing smarter. That's what we want to be is to have your email campaigns be a hybrid of you and AI and predictive. So the engine will make a lot of decisions on your behalf. So you can become better marketers. And you being on these calls obviously gives you first dibs and first access to these things. And again, marketing is about quality before quantity. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, Richard. Uh, if you want, uh, do you want to uh, answer the questions in the Q and A section? You want me to address them for you? Um, yeah, I can. I can take a quick look here. So let's, let me go back to my presentation. Go for it, George. Okay, so we have a question from John. So any plans to add more functions to the WordPress plugin, but not sure about the second question. Should I branch your version to add more features? All right, let me get to it. Can I integrate? Uh, okay. Should I branch your version to add more features? I think Lord Zoom is asking if he wants to make edits uh, to the current WordPress. Uh, I'll be honest, John, we don't have a lot of things in the pipeline planned for the WordPress because we integrate a million other ways and our priorities are not quite on there, right? We have so many things to be rolled out that will proceed. So you can extend on top of it and build if you want, of course. Um, our API is open, but right now we don't have a lot of plans for the WordPress plugin beyond just routine upgrades to, uh, you know, match the version of word, latest version of WordPress and security issues. Um, awesome. Also, John is asking, can you integrate with Zoom more? Would it be great to connect with Zoom phone and Zoom chat? Look, Zoom is making it a little bit harder for people to integrate with the different products. Uh, it could be possible if you put it in our product roadmap and we'd love to uh, see if other people will upvote it, okay? Uh, we usually try to, as a company, follow the North Star, which is integrated AI and better quality into everything you do in marketing. Um, but that's also possible in the future. Okay. Bruno's asking, uh, any plans to have HTML live form builder? 
to have HTML live. I'm not sure, I, Bruno, I understand what you mean by that. To, to be able to edit HTML code, you mean? <clears throat> The legacy builder allows it. The new builder doesn't for framework reasons. Okay, we talked about this with the team. Um, so if you're using the legacy, there's a full option there to click on the code and edit the code. The new one supports custom HTML blocks. So there's a custom HTML block you can actually use, drag it and add your own code, uh, but the existing code is not yet um, editable for a few reasons. Um, one of which is in the previous one, people made a lot of mistakes and caused a lot of chaos um, on existing designs that we built. And the framework was a little bit different, more flexible. This one, we made a little bit more uh, error proof. Uh, so editing any HTML might break the framework. So but something we can look for in the future, OK? John is asking, how good are you at sending yet to your emails? I get so many problems. Should I ban them? Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's a good question. I think it's as the others, um, like Gmail, uh, Hotmail, um, just make sure you set up your DMOC policy and try to do the BIMI policy, which is not something mo most people don't even know what BIMI. You have it on our help section. George, can you drop in the docs, help doc on BIMI? Because we've seen sure. Yahoo be a little more strict and if you and some of your stuff are not set up right, they might reject emails. So have your DMOC policy, have your BIMI, which are very simple to set up um, and just treat it just like any other email. If you're getting a lot of bounce backs and issues, it could be, the issue could be with something else, it's not necessarily with Yahoo, okay? Now, granted Yahoo email haven't really evolved as much as the others. So the future is bleak, or maybe people will migrate out or not. That's a different story. <clears throat> cool. Any other questions? So Lawrence, we are working on it. It's um, it's a, a bit challenging. Okay, we have somebody actively working on it in terms of a new framework altogether to make it more expandable. Um, again, aiming for this year, we're hoping for Q2. Still possible in Q2 with a beta version. Uh, we'll keep you posted. It's being actively worked on is what I can tell you, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Tawana. Um, we just take your feedback and we implement it. <clears throat> cool. Any update on the new landing page? Or I'm not sure if you, you answered this one. I did, George. I'm a little bit ahead of you. <laughs> um, Jonathan's asking, do you have a uh, session about UTM? George, do we have any events that we talked about attribution and UTM was part of it? I think we had a full-on marketing event on attribution, right? Yes, we had that one week ago about the first party cookies and the attribution. And we have a blog post on it as well. Okay, you want to share it with Jonathan and or with the entire uh, group? Sure. I will share both the event and blog post. Cool. Awesome. Um, Thank you, Aysen, for your feedback as well. Um, setting up a qualified domain in VBOT is super easy and very stable. I have tried other platforms and VBOT is the best. We try every system out there, even we tried Marketo, we tried HubSpot and others. They do have some bugs randomly. We try to minimize those bugs. If they come up, it's a conflict of some sort. If you're talking about the embed code, that is. Um, but we always, always try to handhold you and troubleshoot the issue all the way to the end. Sometimes we have to stop somewhere because the issue on the client side. Other than that, thank you, Aysen, for the um for the feedback david is asking can we have training on using the api keys uh let me leave this to the end a little bit and then i can come back to this david okay <clears throat> i just have a few pieces of content i want to go over here so thank you for the product uh, release feedback guys this is our roadmap george will drop in a link any ideas just uh put it in there and let's see who outvotes it we have a lot of features that were outvoted already in the pipeline in terms of resources and content that could be relevant to you, um, one, if you joined VBOT recently, we have online training running daily, which is going to be updated as well. Pre, uh, it's an evergreen webinar. It runs daily. I walk through the entire platform, and it's an hour and 40 minutes. You can attend, watch it at your own time, or even get the email watch it later. 
We also have our academies. George, I don't know if these our codes are still uh, good, but you might want to update them with uh, Rich Medina and then provide the new one for everybody so we can retire those old codes. Uh, it's the V8 2023 and CF 2023. So I would, will be dropping them in the chat right now. Cool. And retire the old ones, please, because they're in high circulation. Um, we have a few about affiliate program, guys. If you haven't learned about it, George will drop it in the chat. We'll just be putting a big push on that. Um, also have monthly events. Every time we do an event in VBout, we take the content, we give it to you so we can repurpose it for your own community. And we try our best to cover very relevant um, topics to VBout, marketing in general, how to get better at what you do, and all that good stuff. So all our events are on our events page, and we run one a month so next one is going to be about driving sales and customer loyalty through e-commerce marketing automation so if you're in the e-commerce industry or you have e-commerce clients and you want to understand how to get more results out of your marketing automation campaigns this is going to be an awesome event for you okay it's going to be march 8th at 5 p.m you can mark your calendar and we'd love to see you uh, this is part of what we do every month we have one partner meeting which is the one you're on now and one general topic meetup which we talk about those um those things. <clears throat> cool. We also have a lot of tools built in VBout and funnels. Uh, these are free available tools. You don't have to be signed up. So if you have clients that need to do a spam keyword checker, they want to see examples from brands, popular brands and get inspirations, or they just want to um, get a can spam check on their country. So we have some very good tools. The persona creator is actually very popular in VBout. We get like dozens and dozens of submissions a day. You can build a nice template of your own persona. We also have analyzed a lot of different funnels from other brands, building ads, landing pages, offers, and automation, so you can see how people build those funnels if you are looking into implementing ads into your strategy. <clears throat> One article uh, that was published on our blog is called VBout. Actually, not this one. I mixed up two slides. Um, I think this is just to brag a little bit about VBout. We were ranked top two amongst the um, top 11 platforms on Get App. So great achievement. The market is very crowded. We are carving our own niche as a small company. And that all thanks to you. We appreciate all your feedback. If you haven't left us a review, George, maybe you can drop in a link to our G2 and others, Captera, so we can really excel um, and spread the word. The blog post right here that's what we're looking at is top four ideas to master email marketing on limited budget and some examples. I haven't read it yet, but George said it's a great article. Um, so you can go ahead and, and check it out and see how you like it. <clears throat> Privacy. Go ahead, George. I was saying it was in our blog post. Right. We have a lot of privacy um, articles. Obviously, it's privacy is always changing, ever evolving. We have a data protection agreement, privacy policy. I always get agencies saying, what should we include in there? Please go in and get a reference from us if you want to start from somewhere. Um, I've even seen a company that took our data protection agreement, sent it to ChatGPT, and ChatGPT gave them a little bit better version of it. So that's interesting. Uh -huh. Also, uh, the California Consumer Act was updated. We talked about it, I believe, last month. They just modified and tweaked a few different terms. Um, but please stay on top of your local and country policies, right? Especially if you're doing business in the United States and Europe. These are things to always be on the lookout for. And other than that, um, thank you so much for joining us. George, we haven't told everybody about our Facebook group. If you're not on our Facebook group, kindly join us as well. We push content, updates, reviews, um, recordings, all that get pushed in our Facebook community group. Highly engaged bunch. And we thank you all for your participation. <clears throat> So I'll pause right here. I want to take any questions and I'll cover um, David's question about how to use API keys in VBout. Uh, I think Larry's asking any plan to allow tags to be deleted, added via mobile, via mobile. Uh, oh, it's not working on a mobile app. Um, possible, I need to check on that, Larry. I'm actually not, not too aware that this has been an issue on the mobile device. Okay. And while I'm asking that the question is, David, can you please be more specific on what kind of API keys you want training on? Is it how to use it with our API 
for how to use it with WordPress or what exactly. So please uh, elaborate more. Jonathan is asking, are any traffic sources restrictions that lands in VBOP pages? Can we can we manage affiliate links and CPAs offers uh, on your page? Um, if you're talking about people visiting our landing pages from specific sources, I, we don't really have restrictions. Um, we don't really have restrictions. Now, of course, if you are building referral pages and you're going to, let's say, MailChimp or other platforms to send out millions of spam emails, link backs, probably going to have an issue. Okay. Um, I highly encourage you to check with my team. When you create a landing page, they will moderate it for you. They will make sure that there's a quality or not, and they will respond. I don't see or foresee an issue. Most people in VBOT that are using affiliate marketing, they have a very tight community. People following them, they love them. They like their products and their updates, and they obviously they sell so they can generate revenue. So if that's not a, that's the majority. If that's what you do, that should be totally fine. Uh, this is asking, is there a list of certified professional provider consultants on VBOT to get more support or plans to? We have um, we have a lot, actually. We haven't created a directory for it. It's something we are looking into, Desiree. Uh, if you need help, just drop it in the chat. And George, nudge me afterwards. I can maybe refer Desiree to um, certified provider consultants, if that's okay. And by the way, guys, you can get certified in VBOT through our academy, which George gave you access to. So if you want to go to academy.vbot.com, all our courses are available for free to you as a partner. Um, we have a VBOT certification program. Agency uh, is one of them. Once you go through all this stuff, you get a certificate at the end, which you can use. Um, and we're going to be pushing the partners ecosystem for sure. Right. Um, okay, Miko, thank you. I know you got to drop off. I appreciate you attending. You're in Germany. Uh, have a have a good evening. Bill's asking, do you need an address to send out an email? I mean, in Viva, we tell you to put an address uh, because we want to prevent spammers. I don't think you're, you're doing the spam. When you're sending out the email and you're composing it, you can actually change your address. Um, we recommend putting in a, an actual address on your email, especially if you're legitimately sending out. I do get some of you have work, have home address that I want to put out there. Uh, I don't see an issue with PO Box. Some companies say no, but we live in an age where nobody want to put their home address on the bottom of the email if that's the case. Um, try PO Box. I doubt that it's going to impact anything. <clears throat> David is asking, uh, what other possibilities we can do with the API keys and how to use them? All right, David. So for those of you who are wondering what are the API keys, API keys are used if you want to integrate VBOT with third parties. You can go to your settings and every account comes with an API key. I'm not going to show it to you because this should be private, by the way. Uh, but you get an API key, which you can use on Zapier, Pabli Connect, uh, third party integrations, but let's say you want to build on top of VBOT's API layer, okay? API key authenticates that the call is actually legitimately coming from your account. So what I can do right now, I can go to my API docs. And let's say I want to do a simple call that adds a tag to contact. So I have an add tag option right here. Actually, it was email marketing. All right, so you'll notice right here the call, and don't worry about the code, guys. This is just obviously um, a general knowledge, but you need to parse your API key to that call. And in order for you to be able to parse um, the tag, okay? So again, this API call or any API call for that matter requires an API key, which you need to get from your VBOT account. And you can include it in your PHP call. So you can see in the PHP right here, it's going to require you the key right, right in this section. Um, if it's a curl, um, you can also add it to this place. Okay. If you have an API key and it's not matching your call, obviously the 
this will not be passed. Also, once, once you start calling VBOT through API endpoints and others, you'll see the responses that failed and those that were successful, okay? So this will give you like a full analysis of the API endpoints. Um, okay, I did show you the API key here. But yes, you, you get the point, <clears throat> okay? Cool. Does that answer your question, David? Bill is that saying that he for he missed the access to the academy. Uh, yes, George, uh, please drop it one more time. Uh, and Bill, uh, we actually share a lot of the details after the call, but George will drop it in the chat for you. Okay, access to our academy .com. <clears throat> Sure. Cool. I don't see any additional questions. Um, all right, so to recap, we launched some amazing features. The highlights were enhanced email validation, um, integrating AI into our automation. So we have predictive email send, predictive SMS send, reply detection, and intent detection. We also rolled out conditional formatting on our email builder. So we have conditional content that could be programmed, it's launching soon. A few other tweaks, particularly to um, terms of services on our calendars uh, and the general shortcode, which is going to be allowing you to help kind of create content snippets in large amount of landing pages and change them from one place. All right. Now, I really appreciate what you guys have uh, done in VBOP. Many of you have sent us things that built or we've seen them built. I'm really impressed what you can do with the system and it's getting better. We're integrating heavily with OpenAI, so we allow you to do things on the go, a little smarter, a little more efficiently, um, which is the talk of everybody. But the beauty about having VBot integrated with OpenAI for us is that you have a lot more flexibility and real world application beyond just texting, write me a copy about this, right? You can integrate it into your flows, you can send out emails that were created there. Um, you can make decisions accordingly. So these are real life application of OpenAI. So if anybody asks you, you know, OpenAI and ChatGPT and what is the use of it, VBOT could be a firsthand experience of how you can use it and it's only going to get better. Um, so this is these are things, hopefully we'll have some releases for you next month around that as well. But other than that, thank you everybody for attending. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your loyalty and your continued support of the product. You'll have the recordings delivered to your unbox. And other than that, I hope to see you on the upcoming event, which is on March 8th. All right. Thank you, everyone. And also, thank you, George, for uh, assisting. <clears throat> um, You're welcome. Bill, Bill maybe, you. maybe, maybe with the chat GPT response, maybe we can uh, do some order responses. Not quite there yet, but a lot of ideas internally. So. All right. Thank you, everybody. If you missed it, don't worry. You'll watch the recording after. I'll um, make sure you get it. So thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye.